the end of this story, you might wonder why it's called Good Friday, because actually it's a very sad story. When something very terrible happened to someone that we love, and the disciples were frightened, and everyone was upset. But it's Good Friday because it meant that we could be forgiven for all of the bad things that we've done, all of the wrong things that we've done that separate us from God. Good Friday means that we can say sorry and be forgiven. And the best news is that on Easter Sunday, Jesus conquered death and he came back to life. So I hope at the end of this story, you can remember that it has a happy ending and it really is a good Friday. Now it's quite a long story this morning, so make sure you're sitting comfortably. Jesus had been arrested in the garden and he was now standing trial before the high priest. All night long, Jesus stood before the council, listening to the false charges they made. None of the witnesses they called told the same story. They could prove nothing against Jesus. At last, in desperation, the high priest challenged Jesus directly. Tell me on oath, he demanded, are you the Messiah? the Son of God. I am, Jesus replied. That settles the matter, the high priest declared. This prisoner has claimed to be divine. He deserves by our law to die. But only Pilate, the Roman governor, could pass the death sentence. They must convince him that Jesus had committed crimes worthy of death by Roman reckoning. They handed Jesus over to the guards who tormented and ill-treated him while they made their plans. Early in the morning, they took Jesus in chains to Pilate's palace. Pilate was in Jerusalem to keep order during the excitable days of the Passover. This man has been stirring up trouble, they told Pilate. He tells people not to pay taxes and says he's a king. If these charges were true, Jesus would be sentenced to death. But Pilate was certain that the Jewish leaders had trumped up the charges because they were jealous of him. He began to cross-question Jesus himself and could find nothing wrong that he'd done. All the while, a mob below in the street, mustered and led by the priests and leaders, were chanting over and over, Crucify! 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 Pilate came out to speak to them. Well, this man is completely innocent, he announced. He doesn't deserve to die. The chant swelled to a deafening roar. Crucify! Crucify! Pilate tried another way out. It is Passover time, he said. I shall set a prisoner free as part of the celebrations. Let me set Jesus free. But the leaders were ready with a new slogan. We want Barabbas! We want Barabbas! And the crowd took up the cry. Barabbas was a mob leader in prison for murder. Pilate was at his wit's end. If the crowd rioted, he might lose his job. He dare not release Jesus, even though Roman justice declared him innocent. He decided to wash his hands of the whole matter and hand Jesus over to be put to death by crucifixion, as the mob insisted. Pilate gave in to the wishes of the mob and their Jewish leaders. He set Barabbas free and ordered his mercenaries to whip Jesus before taking him to be crucified. 
Roman whips were made from leather strips weighted with pieces of metal and prisoners sometimes died from the injuries they caused. After they had whipped Jesus, the Roman soldiers teased him cruelly. He was supposed to be a king, was he? They dressed him up in a robe, dyed royal purple. One of them quickly put together an imitation crown from sharp speared thorn twigs and rammed it down on his head. Then they knelt to him in mock homage, proclaiming, Oh, long live the king! before spitting in his face. Soon it was time to take the prisoner to the place of execution. By Jewish law, this had to be outside the city gates. The little procession set off down the hill towards Golgotha, which means skull place. A mocking, shouting crowd followed and a few women went too, crying to see their good, brave teacher being led off to die. Prisoners were expected to carry the rough wooden crossbar on which they would be executed and the soldiers had already laid the heavy beam on Jesus' shoulders. But Jesus was weak from the long interrogations and the whipping. He could scarcely walk upright beneath its weight. A Jew up for Passover came striding up the hill towards them. Here you, the centurion called, laying a firm hand on his arm. Carry the cross for the prisoner. We'll never get there at the rate we're going. Simon was strong and broad-shouldered. He carefully lifted the cross from Jesus' torn shoulders and hoisted it onto his own. Together, they walked the rest of the rough road to Golgotha. There were three prisoners to be crucified that day and the execution squad set to work. By nine o'clock, the three crosses were lifted into position. Jesus was on the centre one. Then the soldiers settled down to wait, gambling with dice to while away the time. Jesus looked down at them with pity. Forgive them, Father, he prayed. They don't know what they're doing. The Jewish leaders had arrived to gloat and cheer. You saved others, they said mockingly, but you can't save yourself. One of the criminals hanging on the next cross muttered hoarsely, aren't you supposed to be the Messiah? Why don't you save us all? But the other criminal said, you be quiet. We deserve to die, but this man is innocent. Then he begged Jesus, when you come as king, please remember me. You don't have to wait until then, Jesus replied. You will be with me in paradise this very day. Some of Jesus' disciples, mostly the women, were there too. Look after my mother, Jesus whispered to his close friend John. John nodded. He'll be a son to you now, Jesus told his mother, who stood crying bitterly. At noon, when the sun should have been brightest, thick darkness fell. For three hours, Jesus suffered all alone, carrying the weight of the whole world's sin. Then, at three o'clock, he called out in a clear, triumphant voice, it is finished. Then he gave up his life and died. Whoa, I told you it was a sad story today, didn't I? But never mind. We know how it ends, don't we? On Easter Sunday, when Jesus comes back to life. Brilliant. Right, I'm going to say our prayer now. If you want to join in, you can read it from the sheets. I'll just say Amen at the end. Dear God, I am sorry for the mistakes I have made, for the times when I have made bad choices or been disobedient. Thank you that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for us. Thank you that when Jesus died on the cross, he took the punishment for all my mistakes 
and all the mistakes of the world. Amen. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.